They saw what seemed to be the tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Somebody say each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit mm. and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Jump down to verse number 14. Peter. Then Peter stood up. One of the eleven raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. <laughs> no, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, somebody say the last days. God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants here, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. Listen again if you're not too mean and ain't shut your Bible. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. Yeah. Oh, brothers and sisters, if you're not too mean on your way to your seat, tell your neighbor my sermon title. Say, neighbor. Neighbor. Old neighbor. Old neighbor. Expect. Expect. Something. Something. To happen. <laughs> uh, look at somebody else and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Old neighbor. Old neighbor. Expect. You may be seated in the presence of God. I want to say a word from that thought. Expect something. Especially when God shows up. You ought to expect something to happen. I beloved brothers and sisters, it was May the 12th, 2012 that across every one of the local channels in Louisville, Kentucky, they broke away from the television regularly scheduled program to bring in some breaking news of some tragedy that had struck Louisville. On May the 12th, 2012, a young man was gunned down in the street tragically. While he was gunned down in the street and they were investigating what had taken place, two more people got killed around the corner. My beloved brothers and sisters, the tragedy is, as no one can explain, why these three young individuals really lost their lives. Because the truth of the matter is, some of the stuff that we argue, fuss, and fight over really ain't worth the breath that we spend on. They begin to ask 
ask the question why? Why in the world is this kind of tragedy happening here? And one of the bystanders that had bore witness to one of the events simply reported these words, people had lost hope. And my beloved, before you get so super sophisticated, all of us in here have lost some hope somewhere on our journey. We have not always been this strong, and we have not always been this saved. And I don't know who I'm talking to in here. Maybe you are here today, and you got a hope crisis yourself. You got some tragedy. You got some struggle. You have some disappointment you have to deal with. And the truth is, is that when stuff don't happen the way we want it to happen, we get angry, perplexed, and mad because it seems like everybody else is prospering and I'm having to go through hell. Come on, don't y'all act like I'm the only one in here that's had to go through some stuff in his life and had to wonder why in the world am I having to deal with this kind of drama in my life. Can I pause part parenthetically right here and submit to you that I don't know why we gotta go through what we gotta go through. But what I do know is, is that if you go through it and you've got God on your side, you will come out victorious in the end. Is there anybody in here that ain't ashamed to say, Pastor P, I do agree with you because I had to go through some stuff in my life. I had to go through some heartbreak, some divorce, some setbacks, some disappointment, a layoff, somebody dying in my life, and all to the realization of this one thing, that I made it by the grace of God. Come on, is that anybody's testimony in here on Sunday, that you made it by the grace of God? That's a word for somebody else in here, because whatever you got to go through in your life, you ought to live like you expect something to happen. I expect that I will not cry always. I expect I will not be down all Because of the Holy Ghost. 
Bible reminds us, y'all, in Acts chapter 1, that Jesus tells to them, all of those who are assembled, he says, listen, I got to leave here, but I'm not going to leave you ill-equipped. I'm not going to leave you here unequipped. I'm not going to leave you. Listen, y'all, this is what he says. He says, expect something to happen. He says, I ain't going to leave you uh, because the Bible says that, Lord, I'm with you always, uh, even until the ends of the age, which means that if Jesus does not send somebody else to help, uh, then he would have been a contradiction to his word. But I'm so glad that God ain't like some of us, uh, and that's two-faced, fickle, and funny, that whatever the Lord promises he's going to do, he's going to stick to his promises. See, but 
because sometimes sounds can echo and they sound like they come from God, but they are designed to pull you away from God. But I'm so glad, I said I'm so glad that God still specializes that when I show up, I can expect something to happen soon. That means that that means that God don't have to put your blessing on layaway. Hey God, I feel it now. That God does not have to put your deliverance on delay. That God can do it in an instant. He's not too busy. He's not too old. He's not too slow. He does not have rheumatism. Because whenever God wants to show up, he can do it suddenly. I wish I had somebody in here that wouldn't mind saying, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost. Because I feel it moving on the inside of me. It put clapping in my hands and running in my feet. Listen, y'all, that's the reason why I'm glad about the Holy Spirit. I'm 
glad that the Holy Ghost can show up because he can do for me what I can't do for myself. He can talk with me when I can't talk for myself. He can move me when I can't even move for myself. It makes me holler and I don't even know why I'm hollering. It makes me kick up my leg and I don't even know why I'm kicking up my leg. It makes me throw back my head and I don't even know why I'm doing. It'll make me snatch off my wig and still shout because when I think about God I live with the expectation that something gonna happen. The text in text is wonderful turn. Peter, Peter begins to speak up. Verse 14, Peter begins to speak up. And you gotta understand that Peter, Peter, y'all, uh, denies. Peter don't do everything he's supposed to do. But God still uses him. Listen to what I'm saying. Peter does not do everything that God tells him to do. He disobeys. He, he's not faithful. But God still uses him. Come on in. Can I get at least one or two of us in here that's got that kind of shout that I have not Run on and see what the end's gonna 
change. But the second thing I see in the text is I see his unconditional love. See, see, I went to a wedding a while back, and a wedding of a guy by the name of Jerron and uh, his soon to be wife Elena. And at their wedding, they had their own wedding vows to exchange. And they, they didn't want to go to traditional ones, they wanted to go with something that they wrote. And each of them, at the end of their vows, said this I love you for you. I love you for you. In other words, I ain't trying to change you. I love you for who you are. Now y'all, that can't work for everybody. Because everybody don't love you because of who you are. Because people will love you to get some stuff from you. People will love you to get some stuff out of you. People will love you so that they can get a leg up in your life. But is there anybody in here that's glad that I ain't got to worry about whether or not you love me because I have somebody that loves me unconditionally. I have a heavenly father that loves me in spite of who I am. I got a daddy who loves me unconditionally. And this is how I know that he loves you unconditionally because he didn't leave you to die. He sins, look oh God, I feel it now. He sins the comforter so that you and I would understand that we are not in it alone. So if you want something to happen, you ought to expect it because God sent you somebody in the person of the Holy Spirit to walk with you everywhere you go. That's the reason why I walk with a new kind of swag. That's the reason why I got a new glide in my stride.
possible change. <laughs>